My goats, we all have that one game that made us. That one game that completely changed the gaming experience for us and made us realize and made us think. I want to be a gamer for the rest of my life. I'm talking about the first game beyond the gateway that completely redefined the gaming experience for you and, and pretty much became the standard to which you held other games to. It's the one game that you absolutely cannot help but think about anytime anyone mentions video games. You may not really talk about it as actively anymore, but it's there. It's buried deep within you. It's woven into your soul. This isn't the first game you've ever played that got you into gaming. It's not that game. It's the game that got you after you got into gaming. It went beyond the basic reward loop that you really enjoyed in the first gaming experience. It went to a point where it was like, oh wait, no, you want that and more. So how about you just take a moment to process everything I just said and then write down the name of the game that comes to mind. Please go ahead and do that right now, but don't give me two games. I don't want two games, I just want one game, okay? And don't be worried about the game you're gonna write in the comment section below or what someone's gonna say to it. All right, if anyone has an issue with your game, if anyone has an issue with your game, you know, so long as it's not some really crazy game that like is just really weird and crazy, just really, really weird and crazy. I'm talking about some like weird ass, you know, weird game. You know, chances are they're just probably upset with the size of your PP, okay? They see that your, your PP is big and their PP is small and it upsets them. For me, that game was Half-Life, a game that I had to borrow from a friend and play on a PC that had a 20 gigabyte hard drive, a Pentium 3 processor, and who knows what sh tier video card. And because I couldn't play it every day because my parents hated video games and wanted to control every single element of my 14 year old life, it took me about two summers to actually beat the game. But it was such a ride. It was a good, good, good ride. And it's a ride that I want to share with you, my absolutely adorable, sweet, cute goat. So cute. So let's take a moment to talk about Half-Life, the game that made me. Prior to playing through Half-Life in its entirety, the only experience I had with shooters were short-lived ones with titles such as Wolfenstein 3D, Doom, Blake Stone, Perfect Dark, Goldeneye, and Halo Combat Evolved. And that may seem like I had a lot of experience with them, but the reality is that I only had the opportunity to really play them when I was at a friend's house or on a school computer. Half-Life was the first shooter that I had some sense of intimacy with. I played through it by myself without anyone sitting next to me to guide me, and it was the first game that I felt like I had truly beat on my own. It also felt so different from other shooters because it actually forced me to think about how I was going to progress from one area to the next, instead of just getting me to collect a key somewhere to unlock a door elsewhere. And I know that this is something that's said quite frequently about Half-Life, that it was the quote unquote thinking man shooter, but I was a kid who felt like he was smart, but was always told he wasn't. So it felt great to actually get somewhere in this game. It felt like the game was acknowledging my intelligence. And then there was the obvious part, the fact that you play the game as a literal scientist nerd who's got to rely on his brain to save the day and eventually just ends up becoming a one man army. It was the perfect power fantasy for any nerdy kid that really just wanted to be the good guy and save the day. Another aspect of Half-Life that I really appreciated was that at the end of the day, you were just a civilian trying to survive a disaster that put the entire world at peril. You weren't some military trained dude. You weren't a cop. You were just an innocent person that was probably gonna clock out and head home the moment the job was done. This made the army as an enemy force in Half-Life all that much more impactful for me. I hated them more than the aliens and I loved tearing through them. The way I saw it, they were reflective of a true evil in humanity. So the reason why I would say that Half-Life is the game that made me is because I felt like it really took this concept of, of military, of, of the army being the good guys and just kind of just turned it upside down for me. And this is the first time I'd ever seen this in the game. So it was really, really impactful for me. And uh, it was also the first game that made me feel like I was smart enough to really fully accomplish something on my own and I don't know I thought that was really cool I know that you guys like seeing me react to some of the things that you have to say so I went ahead and posed the question on Twitter so we're gonna go ahead and look through those right now and holy shit did you guys reply over 900 replies what what Pitmaster Broda says Happy Wheels it's a game that I never really kind of got the opportunity to play when people were crazy about it and uh, actually no it, it was a game that little kids would come into my streams asking me to play when I when I was when I was playing Soma or something or when I was playing like Grand Theft Auto they were like play Happy Wheels play Happy Wheels play Happy Wheels and I was like F Happy Wheels bro I'm not gonna play that shit with you I'm playing big boy games Gregor and Chris Raygun with Halo 3 of course that makes a lot of sense I know that Chris is a huge fan 
of Halo 3. I don't understand why though, it doesn't have grappling hooks, so it's easily a 6 out of 10 for him. I didn't have a lot of time with Halo 3, but I respected it because it really kind of appeared to have perfected the console shooter. Matt Savage, the first person to be employed by me to protect me from racists, he says Blades of Steel, and that's a game that came out when sports games were cool. My buddy Jono says for storytelling, The Last of Us, which I, which I can totally see him on, by the way. There's certain mechanics in the game that I feel I don't really enjoy anymore, but but yes, in terms of story, it really hit all the perfect notes. Grande with Witcher 3, a game that I started twice and I still haven't completed. I, I, I need to start it again. I think I need to start it again. I feel like every time I play it, I stop playing it for way too long and I just never get back to it. And when I get back to it, I'm like, I am totally not engaged in any of these stories right now. So I feel like I really need to get into playing it. My God, the memes are here. The f***ing memes are here. Big Chungus for the PS4 featuring Dante from Devil May Cry. That's not a real game. I'm asking for real games, okay? Are you gonna participate or not, ban? This person here says Minecraft, which I can totally see because it definitely redefined what it meant to be creative in a video game. Larry Kubiak, a longtime follower of mine, says Final Fantasy VI. Hold on a second here, Larry. Larry, Larry, I know you're watching this, okay? I, I want you to take note of this thing on the top left corner of my mouth, this little white speck that looks like either spit or food. And I wanna, I wanna assure you, that is neither of those things. What this is, uh, is, is, is dry skin. Because these Montreal winters, they f***ing destroy me, bro. Alright, they destroy my lips, they dehydrate the shit out of me. And no amount of water can fix this, okay? And for some reason, at some point in the video, my skin decided to fall apart on my lips. I don't know why, it's really annoying, I had to look at it while editing it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And for anyone else that noticed, I'm sorry, okay? It's gonna still be there. Just please, 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 try to ignore it. Really comment on any of the Final Fantasies. Uh, you know, everyone tells me that Final Fantasy VII is the best, but every time I've looked back at Final Fantasy VII, I've been like, "Wow, wow, that's an ugly game." I don't ever want to look at that. That's gross. Don't ever put that in front of me again. I hear they're making a remake. Uh, I haven't really been paying a lot of attention to it because I'm not a huge Final Fantasy fan. Uh, but from what I hear, fans are kind of disappointed with it. I don't know. I haven't really looked into it. Californian gamer politician Ron Basilian says, Civilization, the original DOS version, which dates me almost as much as the wonders that made it famous. I, I want to know though, Ron, was this your entry point into games or was it was it your like the, the thing that redefined what it meant to play games? And, and if, if that's what took it took to redefine what it meant to play games, have you still been playing games? Are you still gaming, bro? Are you still gaming? Mister, here's an interesting thing by Jared Eden on Dark Souls 3. He says, never has a game challenged me so heavily yet rewarded perseverance with more brutality. It was almost a religious experience finding out exactly how much patience and skill I had that I didn't know I had before. That is really good and totally understandable. Ty says, RuneScape. That was the video game of my formative years. I'll always love and miss the time I put in as a kid, even if I didn't know anything about how the game actually worked. I remember having uh, my first cyber sex encounter in RuneScape, where someone took me up into the attic of a church and we, it, and we began to exchange oohs and ahs and, uh, and, you know, perform written sex acts. And then I gave that person all my money, it was a girl by the way, and then said, you are my wife now. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, I, anyways, I, I had a marriage of sorts, you know, in front of some NPC priest in the church. And then I logged out thinking I was going to log back in the next day and continue adventures with this wife of mine. And, uh, you know, probably was some old fucking guy, you know, that wanted to scam some horny teenager out of some money. And uh, anyway, I came back on and, and was like, hey, uh, your husband is here. <laughs> and they were like, who is this? And I was like, wow, I just got played because I'm being a dumb, horny teenager on the internet. Alex here with Half-Life. Yes, Alex. Yes, Alex. Yes, us nerds. We had finally had a fighting chance. The game made us feel like we weren't just these crippled nerds. We were guys that could stand up for ourselves. Yeah, I know, man. Alex, I'm with you, bro. I bet you were bullied too, huh? You were bullied too? Come on, Alex. Connect with me. Connect with me, Alex. Yes, you were. Look at this game. This f***ing nice game. Thank you for this one, Sporks. Can't forget Super Metroid, man. That kind of... Uh, I would see... I could definitely see people getting into games earlier on and then coming across Super Metroid and be like, what the f*** is this adventure? Holy shit! You know, because I played... I played Super Metroid when I was in high school, okay? When the game was almost a decade old at that point. 
and I loved it. I loved it, dude. All right, so that's it, my sweet goats. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it for you. And if you did enjoy it, leave a like, hit the sub button, and ding that bell icon. If you ever want to catch me live and support me even further, you can go ahead and check me out on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Okay, that's it. I love you. Bye.